With the release of Next.js 13, Next.js officially supports React server components. And here's everything you need to know about server components so you can start building better and faster apps right away. Let's start with what server components are. With server components, the initial HTML is rendered on the server. This means the initial page load is faster and the client side JavaScript bundle size is reduced. This is possible because we can fetch data in the server instead of on the browser. Use servers that are close to our database and keep large dependencies server side. With Next.js, all components within the app router are server components by default, including all special files and components in the app directory. For example, if we create a components folder inside the app directory, every component will be a server component. Let's try this. Create a new component folder inside the app directory and add a new component named servercomponent.js. As I said before, server components are great for fetching data because it reduces the amount of work the client has to do. So let's fetch some dummy data from an API. Create a new getData function that gets some dummy data from the dummy JSON API. Then we can call this function inside our server component and lock the data to the console. Import the component on our homepage. If we open a local server and then open the developer console, we can see that the data is not being locked in the console. But if we look at our local server, the data is being printed. This means that the data was successfully fetched on the server side because logging the data to the console would be on the client side. By default, all the components inside the app router are server components with no extra work. Getting data from the server is great for performance. But what if we want to add interactivity to our app? We need to make our server component a client component, otherwise we will throw an error. We can test this by importing new state into our server component. If we open a local server and navigate to the index page, we see that Next.js throws an error saying that we can use hooks inside a server component. This is because hooks are only available in client components. Fortunately, it is very easy to create a client component. Let's create a new component called clientComponent.js that displays a simple counter. We use the useState hook to create a counter that increments every time we click on the button. We display the count and the button in our return statement. Then we import the component into our home page. When we try to run this code, you will notice that it displays an error. This is because our client component is currently being rendered on the server. To make this a client component, we need to use the useClient directive. Add useClient at the top of the file. It must come before any imports. If we try to run this code now, we see that it works. We can now use hooks in our client component and add interactivity to our app. Using client components is as simple as adding a line. But this backs the question. When do you use server components and when do you use client components? The official documentation has a great table showing when to use which. Use server components when you need to fetch data, access backend resources such as databases, or when you need to keep sensitive information on the server, for example, API keys or access tokens. If your application has large dependencies, you can also use server components to reduce the size of the client-side JavaScript bundle. On the other hand, Client components make more sense if you need interactive UI. If you rely on states and lifecycle facts, use browser-only APIs like local storage or the clipboard API, have custom hooks that depend on state effects or browser-only APIs, or if you use React class components. It's important to understand that we don't need to use client in every file. It only needs to be defined once at the top of the tree, since any module imported into it will be considered a client component. Server components are guaranteed to render only on the server. Client components are primarily rendered on the client, but with Next.js, they can also be pre-rendered on the server and hydrated on the client. Next.js does this first behind the scenes because we can also nest server components within client components, which can lead to unexpected behavior. To avoid this, it's important to know the best practices for using server and client components. The first best practice is to move client components to the lease of your component tree whenever possible. For example, you may have a page that has static elements such as a logo, links, images, etc., but also interactive UI like a search bar that uses state. 
instead of making the whole page a client component, move the interactive logic, such as a search bar, to a client component and keep the rest as server components. If we import a server component and client component into our home page, we can see that the server components rendered on the server and the client components rendered on the client. Because if we click on the counter, it incurrents, but the API data is not printed in the console. This means that the server component is still fetching the data server side. But what if we want to mix them? How do we mix server and client components? One important thing to remember is that we can import a server component into a client component. This is because it would require an additional server round trip. Let's test this by importing our server component into a client component. As you can see, when we try to click on the counter, it doesn't work anymore. Next.js doesn't allow us to import server components into client components. The recommended way is to pass server components to client components as props. Let's modify our client component. We add a new prop children and run it inside a div. Then move our server component into our client component inside our page.js file. If we go back to our browser and click on the counter, we see that it's working again. If we open the console, we don't see the data being locked anymore. But if we look at our local server, the data is still being printed. With this approach, our components are decoupled and can be rendered independently. Our server components are rendered on the server before our client components being rendered on the client, even though they are nested. This is the recommended way to compose server and client components together. And that's actually very like React, because passing JSX components to other components is nothing new and has always been part of the React environment. This comes in handy when we want to use React context. Most of the time, we use React context to share data between our components. React context only works with client components, so we can use it with server components. But we can pass server components to client components as props and use React context inside our client components. Let's try this out by moving our counter state to a new context, create a new folder called context inside our app directory, and then create a new file called countercontext.js. Make sure it's a client component by adding use client at the top of the file. We create a new context called countercontext and a new provider called counterprovider. We use the use state hook to create a counter that increments each time the button is clicked. We then create a new provider that passes the counter state to our context. Let's wrap our layer.js file with our new counter provider. We want to wrap only children and curly braces with our counter provider instead of the entire HTML document, because this makes it easier for Next.js to optimize our app. We can now modify our client component JS file to use our new counter context. Import the counter context and the use context hook. Replace the existing use state hook with the context. Now, if we go back to our browser and click on the counter, we see that it's working again. With the counter context rendered at the root, all the other client components throughout the entire application will be able to use this context. But all the other components that are not client components will stay server components and be pre rendered on the server. And that's basically how you use server and client components in Next.js. By now, you should have a pretty good idea of when you need to use server and client components in your React app. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this to help you become a better web developer. Thanks for watching and see you next time.